So how was this? Diana, you um, skipped a lot of questions. Well, I tried to do, I got stuck on some, which took like more time. And then since I didn't have like a lot of time left, I just d did the ones that were like faster or like, easier to do. So I skimmed through those. And then I went back to the ones that took some thinking, but. Maybe it's your first time. And uh, starting from this week, every week you will have this kind of test. The time uh -huh. will be seven to five minutes. Okay, you have to practice taking tests. Okay, Shahina, let's have a look quickly so you can see it right well. Um, yeah. Okay. So the first question, let's have a look and after we'll continue our class. What is the sum of 4x dollars, right? Here we have 4x dollars and 4x cents. Express your answer in cents. Okay, quickly we need to change dollar into cents and just add them up. We know yeah. that to change dollar into cents, right, this 4x, we should multiply by 100. And that's equal to 4x times 100, that is 400x. So now we have 400x cents. And here we have 4x cents, if you just add this, 400, x plus 4x. What is it? 404x cents, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's correct. Your answer is correct, the first one. Now, if you continue the second one, as you see, we have a lot of brackets, Shahina, here, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, we should start from the innermost brackets, right? And your answer is 7xy. Is it right? Is it your answer? Um, yes. But here, how did you get this xy? We don't have any product of x and y here. How, how did you get this? Here we have negative 1x and here we have 6y. Is it called 6, 7xy? Oh, I think I messed up on that. Yeah, 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 Shahina. First, okay, let's just do this quickly together. Let me just change the color for this question. Equals, right? If you start from the innermost bracket, let me just write here first 2x. That's the first 2x. Minus that curly bracket. Here we have 2x, right? And let's remove this one. Negative 3 times 2y. What is this? Minus 6y, right? And negative 3 times minus 3x. What is it? Um, plus, I, right, because minus minus is plus, 3 times 3 is 9x. Oh. Okay, we cleared these brackets. Another one, now in front of this brackets, we have only minus sign. So we have to change the sign. It's like minus 1. Minus 1 times 5, that is just minus 5y. Minus times minus, it is plus 2x. And what we have here, minus 9y. So here we have this bracket and minus 3x. So here we have curly brackets. Continue. Immediately we have to simplify this inside. So now, as you see here in front of this rectangular bracket, we have nothing. So we don't have to write this. So now we have only curly bracket. I can just write it as curly bracket. Here 2x plus 9x, Shahina. What is it? 2x, 2x plus 9x. 11x. Okay, this is 11x. And 11x plus 2x? 13x. 13x. So here we have 13x. Now here we have minus 6y, minus 5y. What is it? Um, positive 1y? No, no, no. Minus 6y, minus 5y. What is it? What is minus 6, minus 5? What is it? Negative number, negative number. We are adding negative number to oh. negative number, right? So that is minus 11. So here we have minus 6y, minus 5y, that is minus 11y. And minus 11y, minus 9y, what is minus 11y, minus 9y? What is it? It is, hold on. Um, 
positive, true, or negative? Not positive, not positive. You know how we are doing this. I can just take negative y out, minus y out. What is left here? 11 plus, nine. what is left here? 9. 11 plus 9, 20. Minus times 20, oh. minus 20 y. Minus 20 y. So here we have minus 20 y. And here we have still minus 3x, minus 3x. Let me simplify further to x minus. Here we have, we have only brackets. I can just write this simple parenthesis. 13x minus 3x. 13x minus 3x. Yes, what is it? Um, 10x, right? 10x. What is 13x minus 3x? 10x. 10x. And we have only 21. We don't have any like term for 21. Mm -hmm. So now next we have to clear this bracket. So it is 2x minus times 10. That is minus 10x mm -hmm. minus minus. That is plus wow. 20y wow. equals. What is 2x minus 10x? That's negative 8x. Negative 8x plus 21. Can we simplify further? No, right? So that is the answer. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah, I was stuck on that. All right, another question. Find the oh. highest common factor and least common multiple of 12, 15, and 18. Yeah, for the highest common factor, I don't Usually, know what. I'm yeah, actually, stuck. how to do it? Maybe you have never done this before. To do this yeah. one, Shahina, look, it's very simple. I'll just show you that method. Just write these numbers next to each other. Here we have, uh -huh. let me change the color here. Let's use blue for this question. Right here, 12. And here mm -hmm. we have 15 and 18. And next to it, draw a vertical line. And you have mm -hmm. to just start dividing them by prime numbers. What do we mean by prime numbers? Prime numbers is two, three, four. 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. These are prime numbers, right? Oh. So start with the first one, the first prime number, okay? So actually here, can I divide by 2? Any of them is divisible by 2? Yes. Here, if I just write 2, right? 12 is divisible by 2. So it's, if you divide by 2, it is 6. 15, not divisible by 2, just write itself. 18 is divisible by 2. 18 is divided by 2, it's 9. Yeah. If this actually all of these numbers are divisible by two, I will put here star. Otherwise, don't do anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you'll understand why is it so. Here, can I still divide by two? Yes, because this number is divisible by two. Divide by two, divide by two, there's three. Can I divide 15 by two? No, just write itself. Nine by two? No, it is itself. So, is any of these numbers divisible by two? No. 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 Okay, this two is gone now. We have nothing to do with two. Next prime number is three. Is any of them is divisible by two? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it is. I mean three. If you divide by three, three is divided by three. It is one. Fifteen is divided by three. It is five. Nine is divided by three. It is three. As you see here, all of these numbers are divisible by three. So let me just put here something like asterisk here. Now, when it is one, we stop. We have nothing to do here. So I can divide still by three, divide by three. Here we have one, five. So next prime number is five, divide by five. So it is one. So as you see here, we have one, one, one. Now we stop here. Okay. So now, what is the highest common factor? That is a product of all the star numbers. How many star numbers we have? Only three, right? So that's equal to three. If we have two, because this number is divisible by all of these numbers. How about least common multiple? Shahina, to find a least common multiple, we have to multiply all these numbers together. That's equal to two times two times three times three times five equals two times two, four, four times three, 12, 12 times 3, 36, 36 times 5. What is 36 times 5? Um, 180. 
right? Oh, yeah, I got it. So Shahena, look, now here, least common multiple is 180 and highest mm -hmm. common multiple is three, right? Oh. And you oh, need to I... practice this. Maybe I can show you some examples about this. This is how we find yeah, highest it. common factor and least common multiple. Okay, I may show you some examples, but again, I will give you another test. Uh, all right, it's, it's clear, right? Yeah. Next question. Okay, let's change our marker. Now let's use this orange. So Shahena, to do this, uh, it says that just estimate without using calculator, following mentally. Mentally means without using anything. We should just estimate. So that's approximately equal to 100 is approximately equal to 100. I mean, 101 is approximately equal to 100. And square root of 81, that's equal to 9. So that's equal to 900. So this thing is approximately equal to 900. Now, how about how do I calculate this? So this cube, 26, right? I can estimate this with cube 27. Approximately equal to, right? Very close, because we are just estimating this. Yeah. Where do we use this? You're just going to supermarket. You're going to buy a few items, right? Usually, how do we calculate the total bill? We should just estimate, right? Okay, this is this much, this is this much we estimate. So, I'm just estimating this with 27. Why 27? Because cube big root of 27 is equal to three. Why? Because three cube is equal to 27. Right, Shahina? What is cubic root of eight? It is two because two cube equals eight. What is cube big root of let's say um, sixty four? That's equal to four. Why? Because four cube is equal to sixty four. Oh. Okay, Shahin. So now yeah. I can estimate this one by cube root of twenty seven. I can mm -hmm. estimate this five hundred two by five hundred divided by, I can estimate this 49 by 50, right? These numbers are easy to calculate. Now, if you simplify this, cube root of 27, that is three, and 500 is divided by 50, what is it? It's 10. 10. So what is three times 10? 30. 30. So that means oh, that yeah. this, the whole thing is approximately equal to 30. That was so easy. Right? Yeah, and how about is. this one, Shahina? This square root of 65. Square root oh. of 65. We can estimate this with square number, right? Because to take something out of the square root, it must be a square, square number. I can estimate this with 64. And what is the square root of 64? What number square is 64? 32. Eight. Oh, 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 yeah, I was dividing in two. Yeah, eight squared means eight yeah. times eight. That's equal to 64. Yeah. So I can estimate this with, we are just estimating square root of 64 times, again, this cube root of 63, I can estimate this as 64 times and divide it. I can estimate this 17 by let's say 16 because easy to divide what is square root of 64 it is 8 from here what is cube root of 64 that means that this cube root of 64 means what numbers cube is equal to 64 it is 4 right why because 4 cube equals 4 times 4 times 4 that's equal to 64 right um, okay, so if you substitute oh, yeah. here, so yeah, this yeah. cube root of 64 is equal to 4, is divided by 16. And what is 8 times 4? 32 is divided by 16, and 32 is divided by 16 is equal to 2. Now with your calculator, if you evaluate this, your answer will be very close to 2. Oh, I get it. I get how okay. to do it now. Yeah. Very good. Actually, if you practice a few tests, you'll understand and uh, you get much, much better. Maybe this is your first time. Let me change my... Continue. Read the question. 
A teacher distributes 225 pencils, 425 sheets of graph paper, and 595 sheets of writing paper, equally to a group of students. A. Calculate the smallest and largest possible number of students. B. Calculate the smallest, largest, smallest and largest number of pencils, graph paper, and writing paper each student can receive. Okay. So calculate the smallest and largest possible numbers of students. Let's answer the first question. So if you understand here, we are just distributing three different stationery, right? The first one is pencil. Second one is uh, Okay. The second one is sheets of paper, right? And third mm -hmm. one is writing paper and graph paper and the writing paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one, uh, let me just write, this is item one, item two. Let me just name this pencil as A, item A. The second one is item B. Third one is item C. So in item A, how many item A we have? 225. Item B, that is graph paper, how many do we have? Four, two, five, right? And how about this one? C, we have 595. So the question is, what is it? A teacher distributes, right? Equally to a group of students. Okay, how many students we have here? We don't know. But we know that here, if we have N students, right? Each one gets this N students, they get equal number of pencils, equal number of graph papers, and equal number of writing papers, right? So to do this one, what should we do actually to do this one? N must be, the, the N must be, right? So since it is so, this all of these numbers must be divisible by N, is it? Yeah. If you just imagine, for example, let's say, Instead of this A, just very, I give you a simple example. Instead of these big numbers, let's say we have four pencils, okay, and six graph paper. And let's say here we have eight, um, what is it? Writing paper, for example. If we have a number of students here and each one gets equal number of this stuff, how many students we have here? So actually, can it be one student? No. Yeah, it can be one student, but if one student, one student gets all of this stuff, okay? And here we are talking about a group of students, so it must be greater than one, right? We are not mm -hmm. talking about a student. So how about two, for example? Yeah. I, I mean, here we need to just find, for example, let's say if you have some students, we just give one, 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 one. So we need to find such a number that number of students must be such a number that must be actually all of these numbers must be divisible by the number of students. What is it here? It's actually just the highest common factor of these numbers. Let's say four, six, eight. If you divide by two, here we have two, three, four, divide by two, that is actually divisible. Uh, it divides all of these numbers. Divide by two, it is one, three, two, divide by two, one, three, divide by three, here we have one. So that means that the highest common factor of these numbers is, what is it? Highest common factor of four, six, eight is equal to two. So and then how many students do we have here? We have only two students. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we could do the same with five. Oh. Okay, Shahina. Okay. But, but this idea, did you understand? Because yeah. when we talk about students, it must be whole number, right? Mm -hmm. And also these are whole numbers. For example, if you try any number except for two, it doesn't work. Because when I give here, I give one, 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 okay, one, 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 one. So each student gets how many? Two pencils. Each student gets three graph paper. 
right? Or piece of sheets of graph paper. Each student get here four sheets of writing paper. Anyway, if you understand this idea, yeah, let me just delete here. Okay, that's just simple example. So I need space here. So I need to find the highest common factor of this num these two numbers. What is that? That is two, two, five, four, two, five, and five, nine, five. As you see here, these are all odd numbers. None of them are divisible by two. So I cannot divide by two. Next prime number is three. Is it divisible by three? Yes. Okay, if any of them is divisible by three, we should divide it. If he divided by three, here we have seven, right? 22 is divided by three is seven. Here we have 15, 15 is divided by three. That is five, that is 75. If he divided this by three, four is divided by three. Here we have one. 12, 12 is divided by three, here we have four, right? And five, so this thing is not divisible by three. So that means that we just write it itself, four, two, five. And how about this one? It is 19, also it's not divisible by three, just write it itself. And still this number is divisible by three, I should divide one more time by three. If you divide it by three, here we have 25, not divisible by three, four, two, five, not divisible by five, five, nine, five, right? Actually, these three divide only one of these numbers. That's why I don't put star here. And here, as you see, none of them is divisible by three. What is the next prime number? It is five. So let's try five now. It is divisible by five. If you divide 25 by five, that's equal to five. 425 is divided by five. If 42, it is eight. 25, it is five, 85. And five divided by five, it is one. Nine is divided by five, it is one. 45 is divided by five, that is equal to nine. So this five divides all of these numbers. That's why we just put here star. Not star, actually asterisk, right? Now, still I can divide by five. If you divide by five, that's one. If you divide by five, that is 17. This is not divisible by five. That is one, one, nine. So only this five divides two of them. That's why we don't put asterisk here. So now it's not divisible by five. It's not divisible by five. What is the next prime number? That is seven, right? And uh, if you divide by seven, okay, this one is not divisible by seven. How about this one? If you divide one, one, nine by seven, you can actually use a calculator for this. And here we have one, 49, it is 17. So now, next number is, as you see, both numbers are prime numbers. We should divide by seven. So that is one, one. Okay. Oh. So as you see here, all of these numbers are divisible by only one number. What is it? It is five. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, hold on. Is it only five? Yeah. I have a question, though. Yes. Uh, so on the first one, you said 22 divided by 3 is um, 7, right? But is it 20? Right? Which one? Are you talking about this line? Yeah, no, this one, the 225 one. Okay. Oh, wait, no. I got mixed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay. So here, how many students we have here? We have five. Only five students. Otherwise, if it is not five, we cannot distribute them equally. But here, Shahina, is the question is, we'll calculate the smallest and largest possible number of students. So what is the smallest number, possible number of students? Is two. one. One. Oh, the smallest two. is one. Also, it's possible answer. And largest mm -hmm. possible answer is five. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So now it says that calculate the smallest and largest number of pencils, graph paper, and writing paper each student can receive. 
Okay, mm -hmm. how can we find that? Since here we have, if, if we have one student, right? If you assume that we have one student, each student, actually one student receives 225 pen, pencils, 425 sheets of graph paper, 595 sheets of writing paper. And how about if we have five students? So at that time, we should divide all of them by five, right? If you divide mm -hmm. this by five, let me change this color. If n equals five, okay, n equals five, each student receives, let me just write the sieves. Here it receives four, three different items, right? Here we have A, B, and C. So if you divide this by five, what is it? It is 55. So yes, 55 pencils. If you divide this by five, that is 85. 85, what is it? Um, graph paper. If you divide this by five, that is 119. So 119, what is it? Writing paper, sheets of writing paper. Okay. Okay. All right. Another question. Can you read the question? State whether each of the following statement is true or false. State whether each of the following statements is true or false. I'll read the first one. The first four prime numbers are one, two, three, and five. Is it true? Yes. Why? Because they can't be um, divided by any other number, like unless themselves and one. Okay. Shahina, the definition of a prime number is it's a natural number which mm -hmm. has two distinct factors, divisors. This thing means different, not equal to uh, each other, right? So that's why one is not a prime number. It's not a prime number. The smallest prime number is two. What are the factors? One and two. And the second one is three. One and three. And five and seven. These are prime numbers. So the smallest prime number is two. Okay? okay. So that's why one is not a prime number. So that is false. Oh, wait, one isn't a prime number? Okay. Oh, no, I messed up. Because one is not a prime number. Yeah, it could be divided. Can you read the second one, B? Every prime number is a rational number. Is it true or false? I said false. Why? Wait, I forgot what a rational number um, hold on, why did I say that? Number it is true. It is. You know why is it true? To answer this wow. question, we should know what we mean by rational number. Mm -hmm. Okay, rational number is any number that we can write as A over B. Here, oh, A yeah. and B, integers. And of course, B is not equal to zero. Okay, if you can write any number in this form, that's a rational number. One over two, rational number. Three over one, rational number. 10 over two, rational number. Two over six, rational number. Okay? So like every prime number, like two, for example, can I write two like this? Can I write two like two over one? Yes. yes. Can I write it as 4 over 2? Yes. yes. Can I write it as 10 over 5? Um, yeah. Right? That means that every natural number, every prime number is a rational number. But um, every rational number is not a prime number. It may not, it doesn't have to be prime number. Right? For example, 1 over 2 is a rational number, but it's not a prime number. It's not a natural number. But this two is a prime number and also it's a rational number. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is true. Question C. Wait, 
3.14159 is an irrational number. Is it true? So irrational number is not a rational number. Okay. Yeah, that is no. false. Why? Because if it is a rational number, after the decimal point, it never stops. Yeah. But here it stops. That means that it's a rational number. So it's not an irrational number, right? Those are just false. And how about this one? The, um, it says it is an integer. But to answer this question first, we have to simplify this. If you simplify here, 2, 3 over 4, plus what is 1.25? 1.25 is, what is it? 5 one. over 4. So um, now simplify this. Uh, I mean, they change this mixed number into improper fraction. 2 times 4, 8. 8 plus 3, 11 over 4, plus 5 over 4. 11 plus 5, 16. 4 plus 4, I mean, just it's 4. What is 16 over 4? That's equal to 4. So now is 4 integer? Um, yes. Yes, it is true. What is integer? Oh, I saw it. Oh, because I thought like an integer was like supposed to be a a whole number and I looked at that and I'm like oh it has decimals and fractions in it yeah and actually every whole number is an integer integer means a real number it doesn't have fraction parts yeah. so like negative three negative two negative one zero one two three these are all integers yeah because I don't think I had to if you just take only positive integers we call them what is it natural numbers and if you just add zero to natural numbers, we call this whole numbers. Mm -hmm. And negative numbers, zero, one together, it's called integer. Okay? Okay. Very good. Next question. All right. 15A is divided by 53A. That's correct. 4C. What is 4 times 7? Um, 28. 28. What is C times C? C. Wait, 2C? <laughs> Shahina, you confuse a lot. Why? What is, what is 5 times 5? 25. What happened? It's not writing. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25. What is A times A? 2A? <laughs> Come on, A squared. Oh, 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 A squared. Oh. Why are you confused a lot? How about what is B times B? B squared. B squared. What is C times C? C squared. C squared. C squared. What do we have here? C times C. What is it? Squared. So we should put here squared. Oh no, I missed the biggest part. Yeah, wow. C times C is not equal to C, right? 10 times 10, it is 100. 5 times 5, it is 25. Wow. 6 times 6, 6 squared, that is 36. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we have only 5, so it's 5 coefficient. And A times B, that is AB. That's correct. Wow. And here we have... Oh, Shahina, here we have multiplication and here we have plus. It's not multiply. This is separate term, right? Uh -huh. So that is wrong. Five times Wait. two, ten. Ten times uh -huh. A, it is ten A. And here we have plus C, plus C. These are not like terms. We cannot add them. Oh, so you could just do that? Oh, that's it. Yeah, can we add A to C? No. They are different letters, different okay. variables. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what did you do here? I don't understand. Fahina, what is it? I, so I use a scratch um, paper, right? I think I turned 21 A squared into a fraction. And then I no, turned No, 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 that... just you should. Here, we need to, it is number, right? It's algebraic um, term. You have to just simplify the coefficient. Here we have 2 over 3 times 21. That means that I can write it as 2 over 3 times 
what is 21? Three times seven. So this mm -hmm. three is three cancels each other. Two times seven, that's equal to 14. So this thing is equal to, the whole thing is equal to 14. And here we have A squared. Oh, I see. I see. And how about okay. here? Here we have 15x. Okay, uh -huh. 15x. What is 3 times 5? Um, 15. 15x minus 15x. What is 15x minus 15x? Zero. Zero. Okay. That's equal to zero. Zero. Okay. Next. I don't know why you divide 15a here. 50a here. 8a. All right. We have nothing to do here. 2 times 6? 12. 12a. And what is 8a plus 12a? Um, that is 20. 20a. A. Oh, because I think I did um, 8a times 6a, and then I added 2. <laughs> oh, no, it's oh, wrong. So, Hannah, you need to practice questions again. Anyway, yeah. let's continue. So, here we have division. First, we should do division. Here we have 4x. Plus, what is 8x is divided by 2? 4x. 4x. No, what is 4x plus 4x? 8x. That's it. Ah. Okay, I'll keep that in mind for the next test. Okay. Okay, I got it. Good. All right, let's oh, solve yeah, this question, I'll... and after that, you may have break. Read the okay. question. Mm -hmm. A family of two adults and four children visited Sentosa during the June. You have never been to Singapore, that's why. The Sentosa, we have Sentosa okay. Island in Singapore. And tourists, when they come in Singapore, they visit Sentosa Islands. Beautiful island. Cool. Okay, wait it. Um, a family of two adults and four children visited Sentosa during the June school holiday. An adult ticket cost cost $18.90. A child ticket costs $12.80. During the promotional period, if the family enjoyed the promotional price, A, what is the total cost of the ticket for the family? Okay, here we have two adults. Uh -huh. A change, um, use this one maybe. So here we have two adults and four children. Adult ticket is this, right? And child ticket is this. So to find the total cost, you multiply by four, but two, two times 18.90 plus, and you need to write here four children, four times 12.80. Now you have to calculate the Shahina. First, you just write one single expression. Okay, if you evaluate this, what is it? It is 36. This one is 37.80. Plus, how about this one? Multiply by 4, it is 0. 4 times 8, 32. We have 3. 4 times 2, 8. We have 3, it's 1. We have, um, okay, 1, 4, 5, right? Here we have 5. Now, if you add this, 37. It is 88 and 89. So that's equal to $89. Very good. That's correct. Yeah, but I you need to write like this, Shahina. Just single expression, not one okay. by one. Okay. And I can, I can just write your total cost. Let's say T. Okay, next one is, what would be the change if a $100 note was used to purchase the tickets? So... I didn't... Huh? I don't understand it because like that would be like a negative number. No, a change you have, and you just asked that. Okay, you are with four children, four kids, and the parents, and you just ask the cashier how much is it, and she says eighty nine dollars. And in your purse you have one hundred dollar note. If you give this one hundred dollar, right? So they have to just take out from your money eighty nine because you have to pay this amount. So this will be how much left. That is $11. So you will get $11 change. I, 
Oh, I get it. I, I was thinking the same thing, but I think I just swapped the numbers around, like 89 uh -huh. minus 100. Okay, I because you are, you are giving $100, right? And yeah. uh, she has to charge actually $89. So she just gives yeah. you back $11. $11 change. Okay? Yeah. Good. Shahin and I have some rest. Okay, after maybe eight or 10 minutes, we will continue. Okay. Okay.